hey guys welcome to another video in this video we are going to talk about different bypass technique for two-factor authentication or two-factor authorization so let's get started if you are new to my channel then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel for these new videos that I pretty much post regularly also if you might not aware that uh, last week or maybe 10 days I'm not posting anything because my channel got a strike so uh, sorry about that but there's nothing that I can do basically you to put some strike on my channel for inappropriate content or dangerous or harmful content because sometime I do even make mistake like in some videos I might have forgot to say about you know this is for educational purpose or something like that that's why YouTube put a strike nothing to be worried about uh, we are back again so let's get started with fresh new video so let's look at uh, what are the bypassing technique for two-factor authentication authorization now before jumping into that let's try to understand what exactly two-factor authentication authorization now consider you are logging into your account and you need an OTP for that to log into your uh, you know account or let's say when you're opening Facebook and uh, uh, you, while you're logging into trying to log into your Facebook Facebook ask you for some verification by sending some random number to your cell phone or register cell phone number and from which you can basically copy that uh, number whatever six digit or even four digit number that you get in the SMS and uh, put in the text box which says like okay this is for verification and once you submit that uh, you are basically allowed to access the application that's how the two-factor authentication authorization work in some of the cases there are different clients like Google Authenticator or even RSA token and all those things are also work as a two-factor or multi-factor authentication now the technique that I'm going to say uh, share here about bypassing applies to all uh, it just depend like in which uh, scenario or which uh, exact case you are going to apply this methodology again I'm not saying that this is all straightforward method because I just found this particular post in somewhere in LinkedIn uh, maybe in Facebook and I found it really helpful while performing any security test so if you are in into a scenario where there is like a requirement for two-factor authentication or authorization then you should basically check out uh, for these steps in fact I'm going to share some of my own methods also that I do try while performing this kind of attack on any application again in note this is for educational purpose only now let's get started the first one is response manipulation now how does it work let's say you are basically logging into an application and once you log in you get an OTP number all this scenario I'm going to say is basically getting an OTP to your register phone number it could be also like getting an OTP to your register email address or even authenticator or anything you can apply wherever it goes but I'm just going to say the generic example that is bypassing the phone or verification OTP right so the response mod modification attack how does it work like consider like while well, you are going for an application login and it sends you an OTP or message box then what you do you put the right OTP and then capture the request and response notice all the parameter properly now if there is one of the JSON field output typically in the response you see something like okay if the uh, logging in is equal to success or maybe logging in is equal to failure or true or false in that kind of scenario you just keep a notice for right OTP the success uh, tag will change to you know yes or maybe the success tag will be changed to true in uh, unsuccessful case the success tag will be either changed to false or maybe unsuccessful uh, a parameter will be set so you need to make notice of that particular parameter in the response and then go for it accordingly it like for the true response I mean for the true OTP you can change the parameter wherein for uh, uh, you know false OTP you can notice the same parameter that you have got for true uh, response and change it in the response by intercepting in any proxy tool like Bob suite or even Jap proxy or even any other tool right that way you could basically bypass the authentication or author two factor authentication authorization this is one of the most simple and common method also another parameter to look for in response is like the response code now sometimes the status code changes for the correct password right so the status code will be 301 or maybe even some 201 or something like that so you need to make notice of that particular response code as well and modify if it is too if it is like something for 201 uh, sorry 301 for the correct password then what you can do is again you can change the provide the wrong OTP value and change the OTP value to right one that is 301 and uh, put the maybe sometime there is some location header also will pass through so you need to check look at that location header and change it accordingly so that you get access to the 
portal right so these are the two different scenario first one is by modifying the response parameter second one is also by modifying in the response code sometime you could uh, you get to redirect to the dashboard or maybe home page also you need to check for the content length that is also important part so you need to, uh, as i said you need to uh, intercept the request and response properly to understand different parameter as well as different value now the next one is two factor code leakage in response sometimes what happen uh, developer make some mistakes like okay while you are pro uh, registering or providing any phone number let's say for verification they will put the same verification code in the response is itself so you need to look at the response properly also if they are providing the response uh, you know within the response they are providing the otp value then it's really simple you don't have to go to the register phone number or even email address you just copy that response uh, code whatever you have uh, sorry response copy that same response and put in the text box so that you get access to the application directly now the next one is js file analysis this is one of the uh, most of the found vulnerability in client based kind of application where the js file whatever you will be loading let's say there is some js file auth.js or maybe like communication or connection.js within that js file you will find sometime the password or maybe the otp value are hard coded so you can check for the js file analysis part uh, like before logging in and uh, verify if whenever there is some user input goes through whether it checks with the same js file values and if it is like providing a success or unsuccessful redirection now based on the js code leak also you can basically take the otp value and perform this uh, simple two factor authentication authorization bypass now the next one is two factor uh, code reusability now again this is one of the really simple one i will as i like uh, seen most of the cases uh, whenever there is some two factor authentication or authorization if they send a otp that otp is either valid for 10 minute or maybe sometime even half an hour or one hour so you need to check that uh, properly like how long that or till what duration the same old otp is valid also you generate new otp and try to use the old generated otp and see whether you can actually able to log into the application using the generated otp value or the previous generated otp value that way you get access to the application that's why uh, this vulnerability lead to something like the token not expiring or authorization token whatever or otp value is not actually um, expiring after generating a new one so previous token are not expiring the next one is lack of brute force protection uh, it is again one of the really simple one you might have seen some of the video that i have posted in brute force attack even rate limit bypass so it's basically you try to brute force with a bunch of value let's say there is some uh, while booking a ola cab or uber cab you have to provide some otp number to the driver right consider you wrote a simple program to brute force that uh, otp value like the four digit number you can basically go for 9999 number of com com uh, combination that's why there is has to be some rate limit in protection if it is not there you can basically go ahead and perform the brute force attack uh, onto the application to get a successful authentication authorization code now the next one is missing two factor authentication code integration validity now this is again one of the really rarely found this kind of issue like the code for any user can or work for the other users let's say i'm testing one application and within that i have i am generated one of the otp value and uh, what i'm doing i'm just keeping note of it i'm signing up the same application with user b and i'm just keeping the so while signing up for the user b i'm just providing the otp value of user a that way also i get access to the application and that's where it makes one more once again uh, one of the successful vulnerability right so you exchange the otp token between previously created user with the latest user and see if it is like some server is only validating it properly then you get bypass to the application right so this is one of the rare scenario it doesn't usually happen but still you need to test for it so most of the cases uh, whenever you try to say some developer like you need to make the server validation they do this kind of mistake they will make the server validation in the sense like server will only accept any generated value it will not accept any like other user generated value something kind of so in that particular scenario if the server is only written in such a i mean if the code is written in such a way that the generated value is only allowed by the server so you can basically create a multiple user account and exchange the token and that's where you can bypass to the application the last one is your csrf font two factor authentication disabling so consider there is like a section within the application which basically allow you to either 
enable or disable the two-factor authentication that is where you can check for the csrf attack see if there is some csrf token that is present or not on that particular request if there is not then congrats you can basically attack with that particular methodology by sending the csr request to your authenticated user and disabling their two-factor authentication then you just go ahead with the user ID password or whatever if you have compromised in your past to the account and you can basically log in so these are some of the tips for uh, bypassing two-factor authentication authorization i'm pretty sure that these tips will definitely help you in fact i'll put the link of this particular video uh, in my sorry particular picture on my description box of this particular video so you can go ahead and check it out and do let me know if you have ever got success by following this kind of methodology thanks for watching have a great time